I hope to get into the NBA ratings later this afternoon. Hopefully, the ratings for Game 4 last night will be released by the time I finish recording this video, and we'll get into that later. Let's get into ESPN first. Again, one of the most important lessons in life, a lesson that should be at the top of everyone's priority list, is to learn from your mistakes. We all make mistakes. Making the mistake is not important. Mistakes are going to happen. What's important is you learn from the mistake and implement a plan so it doesn't happen again. Take the NFL, for example. Back in 2016, Colin Kaepernick began kneeling for the National Anthem. Actually started during the preseason that year, then carried over into the regular season. Now, you guys know the full story about that at this point, so we're not going to get deep into it. Ratings for the 2016 NFL regular season declined by double digits. Roger Goodell allowed it to happen throughout the year. It eventually spread. Other players started kneeling too. The audience sent a message to the NFL through social media, but mainly through television ratings. They didn't like the protest for the national anthem. So what ended up happening? Colin Kaepernick, although not officially on paper, was blackballed from the NFL. The NFL made a mistake they corrected the problem. The opposite of what ESPN has done the past five years, five or six years, and continues to do. That's the problem. ESPN has been driving the woke train since 2015. It's killing the network. ESPN is literally driving the train straight off a cliff. They don't learn from their mistakes. ESPN makes a mistake, then doubles down and magnifies it by doing the same thing again, only bigger this time. And they keep expecting different results. Do I even need to sit here and list all of the mistakes that ESPN has made in the last six years? Those of you that have been following the channel for a while, you can probably name them off the top of your head. We've covered it that much. And here they are doing it again. An internal memo was leaked to the Hollywood Reporter yesterday. It was written by Jimmy Patero, who is well on his way to being the worst president in the history of ESPN. When he took over in 2018, his primary initiative was to remove the politics from ESPN's airwaves. We're getting back to sports. We're sticking to sports. We're going to be apolitical. Oh, really? What the hell happened to that plan? ESPN has been more political the last three years than they were the first 35, 40 years of their existence. ESPN has become like Washington, D.C. When people get elected as senators or House representatives, they go into Washington, D.C. thinking that they're going to change the world. I'm going to drain the swamp of all the corruption. And what happens every time? They become corrupted themselves. It's the same thing at ESPN. Jimmy Patero was probably a decent guy before taking over, likely had common sense, then he jumped into that cesspool and ended up becoming woke himself. This damn memo, it's too long for me to read the entire thing to you guys. You can read the memo, the complete memo, if you want, online. Just Google it. It's everywhere. I'm going to take the key points of the memo that I found interesting, and I'm going to give you my opinion on it. Now, just for clarity, this memo was sent before the whole Rachel Nichols, Maria Taylor situation. I believe it was edited after the fact. Just throwing that out there. Here we go. Quote, I am reaching out today knowing that recent events have left many of you concerned about our commitment to diversity, inclusion, and belonging. End quote. The first damn sentence, and I already have a problem. What the hell is he even talking about? This is another example of needlessly bowing down to the wokers. When it's not even necessary. How can anyone question diversity at ESPN? ESPN is the most diverse network on television. It seems like every show on the network has a person of every race on it, whether they're qualified or not. Later on in the memo, Jimmy Patero mentions Maria Taylor and how she was giving hosting duties for the NBA Finals because she was qualified. I guess ESPN has a different definition of qualified than I do. Rachel Nichols was qualified. Rachel Nichols has been covering the NBA for years. Maria Taylor 
her duties mainly relate to college football. Not only that, she has proven on air that clearly she is not qualified to cover the NBA. At least not something as big as the NBA Finals, the biggest event of the NBA year. I'm not even talking about what happened last night either. Social media made a big deal about that, but come on. People make mistakes on the air all the time. It happens to me from time to time while I'm recording. You guys just never see it because I had the luxury of editing it out. Maria Taylor is a prime example of ESPN handing jobs to people based off of their race and or gender and not based on their qualifications. This is what happens when you allow the far left to infiltrate your network. Nothing matters besides diversity. Now let's keep going because it gets better. ESPN started a program last year, obviously in response to the George Floyd murder. B-E-C-E, -E, Black Employee and Consumer Experience. The purpose of the initiative is exactly how it sounds, improving the experience of African-American employees at ESPN, which is all fine and good. If there was a problem at ESPN with the treatment of African-American employees to begin with, then it was a good idea to start something like that. If you have a problem, that would be a good program to solve it. But looking at the demographics at ESPN, there's not a problem. I did extensive research on this last week in one of my videos, but I don't know what goes on internally at ESPN, so I'll just leave that right there. Here are the results. In Jimmy Patero's own words, since the implementation of the BEC program, quote, we are seeing progress in our hiring numbers as a result of looking closely at our talent practices. Of the 116 offers accepted here to date, 52% are people of color and 42% are female. 63% of our executive leadership team are women and or people of color, end quote. Look, ESPN can hire whoever they want. I don't care. I don't care if 100% of ESPN was African-American. African-American women, I don't care. Makes no difference to me. For one, I don't watch ESPN. But two, if 100% of the workforce was black or black women or Asian women, Hispanic dudes, and they were qualified, then it's all good. I don't care the race or the gender of the person I'm getting information from. As long as you're giving me the information and it's accurate information, I don't care what race you are. Here's the problem though. Here's the problem with this type of hiring practice. I'm gonna give you guys an example, a real life example. All of you should be able to relate to this one way or another because you've had to use the post office before and you know how bad it sucks. Both of my parents worked at the post office. They've lived through this, so I'm not making this up. I don't know when this policy started, but at some point, the post office implemented a policy similar to what ESPN is doing, a diversity policy. Here's how it worked. When you apply at the post office, you have to take a test. The test is scored differently based on your race. For example, a white applicant scores a 95 out of 100. A black applicant scores 75 out of 100. The post office, they have too many white males working at the time. They need black females. So they hire the black female over the white male, even though she scored lower and is less qualified. Now this policy on the surface, it seems fair, right? I mean, doesn't it seem fair? The problem is there is no such thing as fair. That's the problem with the woke agenda. Being woke works in an ideal world. A utopian world works great. It doesn't work in the real world, the world that we live in. That qualified applicant, he doesn't just give up because the post office didn't hire him. He goes to UPS or FedEx or DHL. The same thing will end up happening at ESPN. Hell, the same thing's already happening at ESPN. They've been giving people jobs or promoting people based on race. That doesn't work. It's always the best practice to hire the most qualified candidate. This entire memo from Jimmy Patero, 
is nothing but a giant virtue signal. This is going to make the problem at ESPN worse, not better. You spent the last five or six years empowering these wokers. And now you decide to send them a massive apology? Apology for what? Someone please tell me. Please, someone tell me. How are black people and women mistreated at ESPN? Give me an example. Stephen A. Smith, he just posted a picture to Twitter the other day on a private jet flying to Milwaukee to cover the NBA Finals. We've already talked about Maria Taylor. Katie Nolan, another one. Katie Nolan isn't qualified to anchor your local news. ESPN paid her millions to host a show that ultimately failed. No one watched it. The network allows Jalen Rose to go on what many people consider to be racist rants without repercussion. Nothing happens. If anything, you can make the case white employees are mistreated at ESPN. That's who they keep laying off. Bottom line is, Jimmy Patero is a pussy. He's a pussy. He is bowing down to these people while ESPN is burning around him. Let them burn it down. Let them burn it down. We don't need ESPN anymore. If ESPN lost the NBA, they would cease to exist. They may cease to exist even having the NBA because most people in the country aren't fans of woke basketball either. Anyway, what do you guys think of Jimmy Patero's virtue signal to the wokers at ESPN? Let me know what you think. Sign off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys later.